It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, you have found me on a Monday. It is the beginning of another work week, and you can tell by my hat which band I am going back to today. We're making it a Metal Monday with some Dream Theater, and I'm happy that you're along for the ride. So uh, Dream Theater is one of those bands that I've really enjoyed getting to know over the past few years here on The Daily Doug. I had learned about them via a friend before I started uh, The Daily Doug, but I never took the time to dive into their virtuosic brand of progressive metal before starting on The Daily Doug. And if you go back to the beginning of my Dream Theater reactions, the first song I ever reviewed was a live version of The Dance of Eternity, and it wowed my socks off, y'all. And I decided, you know, this is a band that I'm going to get to know. And so my second ever Dream Theater reaction was The Count of Tuscany by popular demand because y'all asked me to. And it's still one of my absolute favorites from Dream Theater. I've since heard them perform The Count of Tuscany live, and it's just a wonderful, epic track. It works on the album and on stage equally well, so today I decided to come back to this album where the Count of Tuscany resides. It's Black Clouds and Silver Linings, which is the band's 10th album released in the summer of 2009. The album has been a really big success for the band. It debuted on the U.S. Billboard charts at number 6, which is a great accomplishment for an album that's got four songs that are longer than 12 minutes, right? So, as I said... I have heard The Count of Tuscany. It's very awesome, the epic closing track from this album. I've also heard The Best of Times from this album, although that reaction is not on YouTube. It's available on my Patreon as part of our very first Fan Favorites episode back a few years ago. Uh, I have also heard The Shattered Fortress as part of the culmination to my exploration of the band's 12-step suite, which is a very powerful collection of songs, right? So today we're going to get to the remaining long epic track of this album. It's called A Nightmare to Remember. And it's the spooky season now here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's October and I thought this is one I've got to get to, A Nightmare to Remember, although it's not a spooky story, but it's quite a scary story as John Petrucci, our lyricist, is recounting a... Uh, a horrifying car accident that he was involved in as a kid, and he's recounting that story. So it's going to be a very interesting piece here. Uh, James Lebrie is on the lead vocals. John Petrucci, our lyricist, is also on the guitars and backing vocals. John Young is on the bass. Jordan Rudis plays keyboards, and I think he's on a lap steel guitar for this song as well. And Mike Portnoy is on the drums and backing vocals. Uh, John and Mike uh, served as the producers for this album, and as I said, John Petrucci provided the lyrics for this song. The music is credited to the band. So I'm going to be listening to the studio version of this song, and it's a nightmare to remember, folks. Strap in. It's a long one, and I have been told that there's some double kick in this one. So I have my When the Double Kick Kicks In sweatshirt on. Get it in the merch store if you would like. <laughs> Let's get to it. Here is a nightmare to remember from Dream Theater. Off we go. A clap of thunder starts us off. It's a nice opening for an album. Kind of gets you into it. Sets the mood. That's E flat. Woo! Okay.
And of course, the chords that they're using are not all on the same key. Woo! That's dark, y'all. Scary. Something scary awaits us. a diminished triad, how the, the roots of those chords are moving. I think they settled in C. And his laughter is going to turn to pain. shit in the background, that's cool. So they're at, they're at a party, and an uninvited stranger starts dancing on his own. So they leave. And they start to make their way back home. That's a five to one. Triplets in the kick. So life was so simple then, we were so innocent, father and mother holding each other. Okay. My eyes, some stillness, stillness wrapped in silence. No more screaming, no more cries. Key change. Same progression they were doing before, right? So it's down by a chromatic third, and then up a minor third. It's like they're moving by. Thirds. Frightened and dazed. New section. So this is after the crash. This is amazing, y'all. Really. Great storytelling. It's sounding like that's a dominant. But it didn't go to its one. It went to its... Right, that's four. Said, Son, do you remember? So they're in C minor. Okay, 
even know your name Then you shined the light into my eyes You said, take this for the pain Hey Nice Flat six, flat seven, one, and C minor. Lovely. Hopelessly drifting, bathing in beautiful agony. I am endlessly falling, lost in this wonderful misery. Turns major. So back to flat six. Doing okay so far. This doesn't hurt me. Doing okay. Your fingers, you try your best to stand. I asked about the others. Is everyone okay? You told me not to what a cool worry. rhythm part from the guitar. Six. So back to this, like a chorus. Turns major again. In peaceful sedation, I lay half awake, and all of the panic inside starts to fade. Hey. Hopelessly drifting, fading in beautiful agony. There's that flat two again. Solo. Switching meters. I can't tell. Back to the guitar. Still can't figure out that tempo or that meter. Boy, you can hear the agitation in John's guitar part, right? Back to that main riff from the beginning.
It's not too oppressive though, so I don't mind it. This is Mike Portnoy on vocals. Never out of tricks, y'all. Into a new groove this long into the song. And they're doing the same progression again in a completely different uh, instrumentation and sound. the last time through these changes, these epic changes. I've got to figure that progression out, y'all. Incredible. Yeah, it's the last thing that they did is that is where it comes back, the leading tone D resolves to E-flat, pretty sure. There's those black clouds again.
How do they do that? How do they do that? I'm exhausted and I'm just sitting here. I don't know how they do that, y'all. Need to make this part of my um <laughs> my exercise, right? Get some get my heart rate up. And these guys can get my heart rate up like few. Holy crap. Y'all. So that starts the album. And then by the time we get to the Count of Tuscany, that ends the album. I don't know if I can make it through the entire album in one sitting, y'all. If I was to do an EPL on that one, I'd have to, to you know, uh, bring a friend to tap out, you know, <laughs> for a while. Unbelievable. Just amazing musicianship and amazing storytelling, for sure. You know, as I've continued to listen to music from Dream Theater, I've come to understand that their lyrics are integral parts of their songs, y'all. Of course, they're known for their virtuosity on their own perspective uh, or individual instruments, right? But the songs themselves hold up because they have something to say, you know? Whether it's a story about an experience from their life or talking about addiction or family issues or war and conflict and... Uh, you know, producing full concept albums like Metropolis Part 2 or The Astonishing with integrated, complex stories. They're really great at taking us for a ride, you know, and um, and they've never steered me wrong yet. They really haven't, y'all. And uh, it's great to see that the band is still going strong here in 2024, like really strong in 2024. Mike Portnoy has rejoined the band. This was his last album with them in 2009. And now they've got a brand new album with Mike uh, with them, you know, and it's in the can and it's just waiting to be released. We're, we're still waiting, guys. Uh, you know, we're, we're curious to see what the new album's going to sound like, please. Uh, and as I film this, there's only... Uh, 14 days, two weeks left until they begin their epic 40th anniversary tour. They'll start in Europe, and the tour won't culminate until next March as they uh, conclude the tour at Radio City Music Hall in New York City, and I am hoping to be in attendance at that culminating show. I will bring protection, friends, and uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'd love to get to... Uh, see them here on this epic tour. I know that they're in Philadelphia, which isn't far from me either, and there's options for us. So uh, check them out, y'all. Get your tickets. They are hitting on all cylinders, as I don't think they've done in a long time, and that's saying something because they're consistently an extremely high-quality band, right? Uh, of all of these uh, episodes that I've ever done, <clears throat> uh, looking at their music, they never disappoint. They always just bring everything that you that they can. It seems like you know they're giving us all of themselves in these albums and in these songs, and uh, that's why I think it gets to me. It, it get my 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 heart is still pumping almost out of my chest as I'm trying to wrap up this video, y'all. Uh, amazing. Amazing music. A nightmare to remember. I'm going to remember that one for sure, y'all, for a time to come. And I want to see if I could figure out what they were doing in that main riff. They started on E flat, and then they got back to D. And then D flipped right up by step until they got back going again. And the chords that they were using were chromatic you know they're not all in the same key they're moving places and using these pivot chords and common tones to move to these different places and it doesn't necessarily get them out of a key necessarily it just moves the music in ways that are unique and funky to listen to and uh it's always giving you you know something around the corner 
to watch for when listening to music from Dream Theater. I think that was a marvelous way to start a Metal Monday, y'all. I, uh, I've i got my, my blood pumping and we're ready to go. And I believe that that is going to be all for today, my friends. I need to recover from that. But uh, I'm pumped up and ready to get to the rest of the week. But I'm going to call it a day today, my friends. Thanks for being with me. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.